The reef-like habitats provided by offshore marine energy structures are critical resources for fisheries, and ongoing changes in energy infrastructure are a point of concern for many stakeholders in the blue economy. Having these structures make a huge difference. Now, whether you're a commercial harvester fishing, you know, 50 miles offshore in a few hundred feet of water, uh, or you're that recreational fisher that's wanting to catch a blue marlin or a, or a tuna, these structures have become, you know, really part of our culture, our fishing lives over the years. It's been really sad to see a lot of these structures taken out. Uh, we'd like to see more platforms reef that are left out there. And moving forward with, with the, in, you know, with the uh, wind energy com coming into the Gulf, those platforms will be welcome. I think having more data uh, on both the, the commercial and charter and recreational side on, on what these things uh, offer, um, you know, needs to be captured and uh, get structures put in the right areas that will not only benefit folks for energy, but also benefit folks that are actually going out there to harvest commercial fish, recreational fish, uh, or charter boat anglers that come from across the country to come down here and fish these, these places. To simultaneously advance offshore energy development and preserve or expand opportunities for fisheries around these rich, reef-like habitats, information on the ecological and economic values of marine energy structures is needed. Location-specific data are required to optimize siting and decommissioning solutions for multiple sectors in the blue economy. To address this need, we are creating FishLAT, Fisheries Location Assessment Technology, a web-based predictive spatial tool that will equip stakeholders with fisheries data to inform decisions and planning for marine energy structures. We have collected a suite of data representative of three ecological and three fisheries metrics and used statistical modeling to expand these data into predictive spatial layers throughout the U.S. Gulf of Mexico. The first ecological metric is the abundance of commonly harvested fish, such as snappers and jacks, to collect these data, we used hydroacoustic sonar methods in which sound is bounced off fish in the water column and returning signals are used to calculate numbers within schools of fish. This is paired with camera observations of the fish community to estimate abundance by species. Species abundances were obtained on more than 70 petroleum platforms distributed across the Gulf of Mexico. These serve as inputs to a random forest regression model that uses dozens of environmental variables to predict fish abundance at any location. Healthy and resilient fisheries require functional, intact, and diverse ecosystems. The second ecological metric of biodiversity captures the full suite of species associated with these structures that contribute to ecosystem function. Remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, allow for observation of the entire visible community thereby documenting this ecologically important metric of species diversity. Economically valuable game species, smaller fish and invertebrates that live close to the structure, and important ecosystem components such as coverage of corals and other encrusting fauna are all recorded from this underwater footage. The biodiversity of these structures supports all the complex species interactions of feeding behaviors, spawning, and habitat creation and use that are necessary for healthy fish populations. Modeling approaches applied to ROV data, similar to those for the fish abundance metric, are used to create a spatial layer that predicts the presence of species inhabiting platforms. Habitat suitability models are likewise used to predict the probability of occurrence of valuable migratory species, like tuna and mackerels, known to associate with these structures. The third ecological metric provides information on the productivity and connectivity of these structures in the context of spawning and juvenile recruitment sites for fish. Courtship and mating of many species occur at marine energy structures. Massive quantities of fertilized eggs fill the water column and are dispersed by ocean currents. Over a period of days to weeks, the eggs develop into larval fish, which will eventually seek out and recruit to reef habitat. Depending on the species and the oceanographic conditions, fish may be retained locally or dispersed to supplement distant fish populations. These marine energy structures also provide additional recruitment habitat that may increase survival of young fish. An ocean circulation model of the Gulf of Mexico and virtual particle tracking software are used to quantify how marine energy structures that serve as fish spawning sites contribute to regional fish populations via larval dispersal and subsequent juvenile recruitment. 
These ecological aspects of offshore energy structures are the raw resources that support fisheries. A variety of fishery sectors operate in the Gulf of Mexico, interacting with marine energy structures in different ways. The first fisheries metric is related to commercial reef fisheries, who target these sites to harvest fish that reside on the structure. Fishing activity and effort are assessed by public position data from GPS satellite connections and analyzed by our team at Global Fishing Watch to gauge fishing use on every platform in the Gulf of Mexico. Variation in fishing effort is modeled with environmental and socioeconomic variables to convert this data into a spatial layer that predicts changes in fishing effort in response to the removal or addition of energy structures. The second fisheries metric is related to private recreational fishers who target structures as a simple way to find fish and have fun with family and friends. Energy structures provide fishing access that would otherwise be unavailable to most of these individuals. Citizen science data on recreational fisheries are collected using a customized smartphone app called Fish Verify, designed to provide the user with fishing information and services, automatically identify catches by species, and ultimately gauge an angler's use and value of these reef sites. Volunteers log catches in a photo bank and enter additional information on fish sizes and how they value their fishing experience. Fishing activities of recreational anglers will be mapped and predicted from an economic valuation model using input from this citizen science app. Spatial effort information is also useful for vessels like shrimp trawlers, who wish to avoid platforms and submerged structures due to incompatible gear types. The third and final fisheries metric is related to shrimping, a major component of Gulf of Mexico fisheries that constitutes one of the most valuable commercial sectors in the nation. Data from electronic logbooks and automated identification systems are used to determine where towing occurs. Shrimping effort will then be modeled from the inverse perspective of commercial reef fisheries, creating a spatial layer that predicts what amount of shrimping could be supported in an area if no marine energy structure was present. These complex, multifaceted ecological and fisheries metrics represent the fisheries ecosystem, which must be considered to identify synergies between marine energy and fisheries in a holistic, predictive context. We are creating this context by combining each of these aspects of the fisheries ecosystem into FishLat, the first and only spatially explicit modeling tool that directly links fisheries information to marine energy structures. The data on fish abundance, species diversity, simulated larval connectivity, commercial reef fishing, recreational fishing, and shrimping effort are converted to predictions that are specific to individual energy structures at any location in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico using our tailored statistical models. Through this spatially informative and interactive platform, FishLat equips decision makers with fisheries data associated with marine energy structures that enables exploration of future development scenarios. With this suite of models, FishLat is able to predict how the removal or conversion of a platform could impact fish populations and fisheries. Likewise, this tool can be applied when other marine energy structures such as wind turbines are added thereby providing context of where fisheries may be most enhanced with the siting of new structures. This is crucial information for regulatory agencies, fishing advocacy groups, and energy industry members to have right now, as oil and gas platforms are being rapidly decommissioned and removed or repurposed as artificial reefs. There is similar urgency in the renewable energy sector, as wind energy leasing areas are being proposed for installations in the immediate future. The transparency and accessibility of FishLat has the potential to revolutionize how disparate sectors of the blue economy can communicate and reach consensus on spatial use of our limited marine resources. Multi-sector conflicts and synergies can be weighed, leading to democratically informed outcomes, and fishery stewardship can be advanced by all stakeholders, empowered by comprehensive, commonly shared data. With smarter data, increased accessibility, and a common bridge to foster communication, FishLat can create productive conversations around the intersection of fisheries and offshore energy decisions, ensuring the prioritization of responsible energy development, fishery sustainability and habitat stewardship for the future, and data-driven solutions for the balance of complex trade-offs among sectors. Looking forward, the modeling framework that we have created for the Gulf of Mexico can be applied globally to 
promote synergies between marine energy infrastructure and fisheries. In this time of dynamic changes in energy technology and production and strained fisheries resources, these are crucial common issues for the global community to address in the growing blue economy.